Hey there, I'm Tyler and welcome back. Today we are going to DIY this beautiful surround shower. This was a very tired old fiberglass one surround piece shower before this and boy did we update this guy a little bit. We went with some beautiful stone surround black splash and a brand new white tub, all stainless steel fixtures with a very modern stainless steel looking profile. This was a big project, a lot of work and a lot of time went into this thing, but I am very proud. Let's see what we can do. Check out the new shirts. All right, we are about to remove or begin removing the tub and the surround. We've got all of the hardware removed, as you can see right there, and we are about ready to start hacking this tub apart. The way that tubs and surrounds are attached to the wall is with a flange underneath the sheetrock, and I've already investigated. As you can see right here, I wanted to check how far out that flange came into the sheetrock. You can see the edge of it right there. So I'm going to use a level to strike a line all the way up each side of the tub. And that way we're not replacing more drywall than we actually need to once we get all the tile replaced. It is time to do some plumbing and on the list of things that I'm okay at, this is way, way at the bottom. I don't find it very difficult, I just find it a real pain in the neck and I have to do things over and over again. We've got the mixing valve right over there, we've got to cut that bad boy out, replace it with a new mixing valve and I did have to solder one piece, which is the spout for the tub and I soldered that off camera because no one wants to see that. The rest of it is going to be PEX and these Tiger Bite fittings that will allow me to connect to the copper that's in the house already. Let's see what we can do. So as you can see there, we got the tub tipped in and from my investigation so far, I am happy with the state of the levelness in the room. The bad news is all that time we just spent making sure the mixing valve and everything was perfectly centered to the 32 inches of the tub was for naught because the middle of the tub or the middle of the valves are not actually 32 inches. They're just a fraction over 15 and that's because of the wide side over here if i would have read the manual beforehand so i'm gonna go ahead and fix that off camera because no one likes plumbing and we'll get that all straightened out You guys have seen me use Schluter products in the past when we did the uh, the new mudroom in the addition, and we're going to be using some of it again. Schluter did provide me with this product. This is not how to use Schluter products. They have a whole bunch of super, super useful videos. I've watched a ton of them. Link to their channel down in the description below. 
but this is just what I use and I would highly suggest this if you're looking to do something similar. Like I said, in this curdy board kit, we got everything in our case to do a surround bathtub like this. So in the box, we got eight sheets of half inch curdy board, We've got curdy wrap, washers, curdy fix, and a couple of different pipe fittings. Like I mentioned before, check them out. I also got a niche, but that is an addition to this kit. calculations and some measurements for the niche which is going to go right here because it would be really nice if the tile coming up to here ended right there but it's kind of an irregular shaped tile it's like two and five sixteenths plus an eighth inch grout line so I'm hoping that we're gonna go right there like I said did a little math and hoping that that is the spot right there and we know we have our studs set up for this bad boy right in here Lay this up, make sure we are plumb. Once all our substrate, in our case curdy board, is installed, it is time to mix up some mortar. And I am using mortar by Schluter. It is all set so I can use it over and under tile. If you don't use all set, you got to be careful if you use modified or unmodified, but just be sure to check the Schluter instructions. You got to mix this up and let it sit for a while, so I always like to do it beforehand. I am actually using an expansion joint profile back in the corner, and you can cut these with a miter saw. And I am using a stainless steel Rondek profile on the outside, which is a beautiful look. And I also use the miter saw to cut this. You just got to go very slow and don't expect to use your blade again after this. I'm laying out the tiles so that I can get the outer dimension to put that Rondek stainless steel profile in place. Now this is an important step for waterproofing the entire system. You need to make sure that the flange in the curdy board joint is watertight. And you do this with the curdy fix and then add a little bit of curdy wrap that is embedded in that caulk to make sure that any water that gets underneath the tile, which is porous, it is not waterproof, it is the substrate that is adding the waterproofing to your shower. So once the water gets through the grout line and through the tile, it'll hit the curdy board and drain all the way down. And in our case, we did a proper job with that curdy fix right there. It is going to drain over the flange of the tub and down into the tub. You can see here we got four inch squares over all of the washers that we used to fasten the curdy board to the wall. And that is the most important factor for all of the curdy wrap fixtures is a two inch overlap. All the profiles are installed before the tile by embedding them into some thin set mortar. This is the expansion joint profile in the corner and the stainless steel Rondek profile on the outer edge. I did order an expansion joint profile to go between the tile and the tub on that ledge that we just waterproofed, but I didn't order enough. So my solution there is going to be using some spacers to lift the grout off, off the tub and then I will fill that with a grout caulk that I can get later on to match my grout lines. To make sure I have a straight line going up the back side of the shower straight through the niche I'm using the laser level and I am going from the middle out 
instead of working from one side or the other. I will work up the middle and then cut the outer tiles as you can see here to make sure everything is even and symmetrical. I did add a little bit of back butter on the outer inch of the tile that would go over the Rondek profile just to make sure I had good adhesion. Now as you're tiling, it is always good to pull a tile off occasionally to make sure you have good coverage on the back. You want 100% coverage on your tile. And as you can see right here, there is a small section where I didn't have quite enough. So that is just an indicator to me that I need to have a little bit thicker thin set underneath the tile or add a little bit of back buttering. Now, if anyone has used the Schluter system before, you will notice here that I messed up. All of those calculations and measurements to make sure I had the niche laid out perfectly, which by the way, we nailed it with that full tile on the bottom there, but I completely forgot to leave space for the Rondek profile. So I cheated a little bit and added that inside the niche, which it doesn't seem to have affected anything adversely, just a little bit more complicated to make those cuts for the miters, and I wasn't able to use off-the-shelf Schluter corners, which are possible to get. All right, check it out. It has been a couple of days since I finished the tile here, and I just went through and made sure any mortar that seeped through the cracks has been scraped out, and we wiped everything down with a sponge, so we are ready for some seal. Because this is such a porous tile, I'm going to seal it first so that we can get that grout haze off of there easier when we do the grout, and then we will seal it again once we get all the grout in place. All right, my hand is freezing because we are outside, but I wanted to take this opportunity to tell you guys about the sponsor of today's video, which is Greenworks Outdoor Power Tools. I happen to have their electric snowblower with me right now, and it starts every single time, unlike my plow, which I'm waiting for a jump right now to plow the rest of the driveway. I use this single stage snowblower for things like the sidewalk, the patio, I built that and the patio in the back and so forth and it starts every single time it is super light to chuck in the back of your truck if you want to be a super great grandson and take care of your grandma's driveway and greenworks has several different options to fit all of your needs single batteries dual batteries and so forth again link to them down in the description below and big thanks to greenworks for sponsoring the channel we are now ready for grout and i highly highly recommend a sanded grout as long as you're over an eighth of an inch because it will wipe off the tile so much easier because it's not as sticky. If you have smaller grout joints, you will need to go with an unsanded tile and it's kind of slimy and just takes longer to wipe off the tile. To mix up the grout, we're gonna need a small bucket. We put a little bit of water in there. We'll dump our grout powder in, mix it up to a consistency that is like dry chocolate chip cookie dough or something fantastic. Got a grout mixed up, we're ready to go. I've already done most of the grouting right here. We gotta do this portion right here and I'll show you what's going on. Definitely make sure you have yourself a couple of sponges and a couple of buckets of water so that you can have a clean sponge constantly, which is the key to getting the grout off of the tile. Just grab a swatch and work it into your grout lines. Now you can work over a pretty large area, but definitely don't work more than maybe 20 minutes ahead of yourself before you go back and clean off the tile. Once you got yourself a nice workup, just grab your sponge and kind of swipe the extra grout right off there, rotating your sponge so that you have a clean edge for each swipe. After you initially get all that grout off there, you will probably have to wash the tile down 
two or three times to fully get rid of the haze that the grout is going to leave left over. All right, so the grout is in. It's been a couple days and it is ready for sealer. In an effort to save time, I'm going to use the roller again and go over the entire thing. And I'm going to use the exact same sealer that we did before. Once that is dried up, we can tape up and we can use some caulk that is the same color as the grout we just used. The top grout line, we can do the bottom grout line since I didn't have the profile that I wanted, if you remember that. And then we are all set to put the fixtures on this thing. Taping off the caulk joint for the upper and lower portions of this worked out fantastic. The only recommendation I would make is that you pull the tape off immediately after applying the caulk. If it dries a little bit and then you try to pull it off, it does pull up a little bit of a lip. To ensure that I had a perfect spacing for the tub spout, I made sure to cut this after all the tile was on so that we were able to get an exact measurement. I did have to solder a threaded insert on there and screw the faucet on, but no big deal. I'm actually drilling through the tile to permanently install the shower curtain. Yes, we're putting a shower curtain on and I talk about that a little bit more later, but there are very practical reasons. Now, something I didn't show in the video, when I was realigning the studs to make room for the niche and so forth, I added some blocking behind where this shower curtain is going to go. So this thing is going to be rock steady. We're not installing it pinching it between the tile and the curdy board. It's actually a two and a half inch deck screw going into some solid pieces of two by four. And a last little bit of caulking on the outside of that beautiful stainless steel profile. And I messed this one up too because I used 100% silicone caulk, which I cannot paint. So I will have to caulk over that with some latex paint and then I can add the tan finishing paint later on. Well, that is a wrap. What a lot of work, but boy, it is very rewarding to come in here and look at all this fantastic handiwork. Yes, there is a shower curtain on there. Not the first choice that we really wanted to go with, but we have multiple kids. We might have one of the girls in there taking a shower and send the other girl in there to brush her teeth. And we wanted to modestly be able to close that off. Yes, we could have gone with a frosted door, but in my opinion, if I'm going to cover up all the work, why am I going to spend $700 on a frosted door when we can just go with the cheaper curtain and save that money for other projects? Hope you guys enjoyed this video and you got something out of it. If you did, please hammer that thumbs up button. Be sure to check out the new merch that we just released. I'm DIY Tyler, and you guys have a good one.